Um, we were in chapter three, the last part. I've kind of summarized on the board where we left off last time. We're looking at fins, extended surfaces. To tackle the fin problems, there are a few alternatives. Number one, table three, four. Table three, four, there are four cases, A, B, C, D. There's different fin tip conditions, either convection from the fin tip, adiabatic fin tip, given temperature at the fin tip, or the infinite fin model. The third column, this is where you get the temperature. If somebody says, what, what's the temperature when x equal whatever? This is a temperature at that as a function of x. T minus T infinity divided by T base minus T infinity. If they want to know the fin heat rate, how much heat is lost by or gained by the fin, here's the QF equation. Okay. Infinite fin can be used only under certain conditions. It's a special model, only used if certain things are satisfied. Okay. This table can only be used for fins of uniform cross-section. Uniform cross-section, like if it's a pin fin, and I slice it normal to the x-axis at any x location. Here, the area is pi r squared. Here, the area is pi r squared. Slice it back here, the area is pi r squared. The area didn't change as I made my slice from x equal l the tip to x equal zero the base. Uniform cross section. Here's a rectangular fin. The x-axis goes out towards you. I slice it out here, normal to the x-axis, slice it. The area is T times W. Slice it in the middle. The area is T times W. Slice it near the wall. The area is T times W. A sub C didn't change. It's a fin of uniform cross-section. I can use this table for this fin. OK, now there's an alternative. You can also determine the fin efficiency. The way you use the fin efficiency is to find the heat loss by the fin, Take the fin efficiency times H times the area of the fin times T base minus T infinity. That's how the fin efficiency is defined. Okay, so to find the fin efficiency, there are two graphs, figure 319 and figure 320. We'll look at 319 as, as an example of this. This is for a rectangular cross-section fin, like, like the eraser, okay? There's the eraser, stick out from the wall like that. This is L, this is T, this is W. We talked about last time the corrected fin length and the profile area. Here's how you calculate them. You put the L sub C and A sub P down here. You get the X value parameter and then go up vertically to the line across horizontally and get the efficiency of the fin. Uh, there's also triangular fins on this graph besides rectangular fins. Or you can go to table 3-5, rectangular fin right here, just like this one right here. Except now, there's not a graph, but an equation. Fin efficiency, hyperbolic tangent, MLC divided by MLC. Plus, there's about seven other cases of different geometries triangular, circular, so on and so forth. Pin fins, these are all given a picture and an equation. All right, so you've got three resources to kind of look at there. We're going to work a problem and see how we go in there and use those. So let's start off. Uh, this isn't in the textbook, so... All right, this is aluminum alloy fin. I think I'll put the picture over here. Okay, so here's our aluminum alloy fin. It's a 2024, 2024 aluminum alloy. Uh, the K value in the back of the book for that fin is 180 watts per meter degree K. 
the uh, fin is exposed to an air stream where the free stream temperature is given as 20 degrees C. The convective coefficient on the surface of the fin is 100 watts per meter squared K. L is 5 centimeters. The fin thickness, a half a centimeter. And the fin width, 20 centimeters. The base temperature is 100. And we're supposed to find the fin heat rate. Find QF. Well, the first thing we want now, first of all, we look and say, well, what can we use? Uh, fin of uniform cross section. Yep. This is uh, just like my eraser. Five centimeters out from the blackboard. The width from here to here, 20 centimeters. The thickness here to here, five, half a centimeter. Half a centimeter. So, yep, that, that uh, classifies as a table 3-4 application. So, I want to use uh, table 3-4. And uh, there's convection from the tip. But before I use that, because that equation has a lot of hyperbolic sines and cosines in it, not a big deal, but it's rather lengthy, I'm going to try and take the easy way out. The easy way out is Q sub F equal capital M if it can be modeled as an infinite fin. So I'm going to see if it can be modeled as an infinite fin. So I'll say check for infinite fin. Okay, because if it is, I'll, I'll put the equation down here. If it is, that capital M is really simple to get. All you do is take the square root of H, P, K, A, C, multiply by theta B. No hyperbolic signs, no hyperbolic cosines. That's it. And by the way, just to fill this in, little m is equal to the square root of H, P, over K, A, C. We'll need that. That little m right there, little m right there. Okay, back over here. So um, we want to check that and see if can use if M L C is greater than or equal to 2.65. Okay, so we'll get little m first. Square root of H P over K A C. H is 100. The perimeter, 2 times W plus 2 times C. 2 times 20 is 40. 2 times T is 1. 40 plus 1, 41 centimeters. Here's the perimeter around it. T, W, T, W. Two times T plus W. Okay, divided by K for aluminum alloy, 180. Cross-sectional area, what you see. Thickness times W. Thickness times W. 005 times 0.2. Square root, little m, 15.1. 
MLC 15.1. Uh, L is uh, 5 plus, oh, I didn't put the, well, it's not, yeah, thickness. 5 plus half of that guy, 0. Uh, 0.25 centimeters. 525. So that comes out to be 755. Compare that to 2.65. It's less than 2.65. Not greater than. No. Cannot use case D. But it's worth a try because it makes life easier for you. If the answer is yes, there's the answer, capital M, right down there, capital M. So we have to use um, case A. Okay, case A, QF. And by the way, don't put that uh, don't put that C in there. Not for table uh, three four. No, this is five zero. That's table three five and figure three nineteen. Hyperbol uh Let's see hyperbolic on right. And we have Kosh here. Now you got the choice. Use your handheld for the hyperbolic functions or table B1 for the hyperbolic functions in the back of the book. Okay, we plug the numbers in and we end up with 143 watts. Okay. Oh, by the way, one other thing. Be real careful there. That guy in the book. Table three, four. There it is, is multiplied by an M out in front here. There's a capital M out here. So I'll put the capital M there. I'll uh, capital M square root H P K A C theta B theta B is a hundred minus twenty capital M if you run the numbers through two hundred seventeen okay all right uh, now we can say well okay that worked out pretty good but why not try figure 319 there's a rectangular fin. Looks like that picture right there. Okay. We'll use figure 319. Okay. To use figure 319, here's what it says. If you want to use this figure, you've got to use LC. L sub C is L plus T over 2. A sub P, L sub C times T. All right, so we've got uh, L is five centimeters. Half of T, T is a half a centimeter. And our L sub C then. There it is. Zero five two five. 
zero five two five. T half a centimeter. <coughs> Three zeros, two six two five. The x axis parameter KAP square root. Five five three. Okay, so we uh, go to the graph, the x-axis parameter value, 5, 5, 3. We go up vertically to the line for the rectangular fin. We intersect, go across horizontally. And uh, it's somewhere between 0.82 and 0.83. I took 0.83. Well, you can read the graph reasonably accurate. It definitely is not 0 0.80, and it sure isn't 0.85 if you look at it carefully enough. So I took one in the middle, like 0.83, 0.82 would be fine, 0.82 or 0.83. But it, you, you can get pretty close, close to 1%, 2% reading error. That's really good. Uh, okay, now there's the equation. So, QF A to F H A fin T base minus T infinity. Fin efficiency, 83%. Convection coefficient, 100. Area of the fin. I'll sketch it here. Top, bottom, front, back. Top, bottom, front, back. Twenty. A half. L sub C, 5.25, all in centimeters. All right, uh, let's do the top first. There's a top and a bottom, too. Top is 20 by 5.25. Plus, there is uh, a front side and a back side, 5, 2, 5, and 0, oh, 5. Times the temperature difference, 100 minus 20. Same answer. It's going to be close. It might be off a little bit, but this time it just happened. The numbers crunched out where it's the same answer. So whether you use table 3-4 or whether you use figure 319, you're going to get the same answer. Okay. You say, well, if I use that, I'll take it one more step. I'm going to try and use table 3-5 because that picture right there Looks just like that picture right there. Yeah, you got it. That's it right there. Now, just to remind, just to remind you, we didn't include the convection on the tip. Why? 
because everywhere in every equation we used L sub C. And what does L sub C mean? It means you made the fin a little bit longer, so there's no heat transfer soon on uh, the tip of the fin. Now the heat transfer occurs around the top, bottom, front, back. You had your hand up? That was it? Okay, okay. Yeah. Because we used L sub C. Whenever you go to figure 19, we use L sub C. If we go to table 3.5, we use L sub C. If we go to table 3.4, we don't use L sub C. Okay. Next, use table 3.5. You're going to find table 3.5. There it is right there, okay. Fit efficiency. Hyperbolic tangent. MLC divided by MLC. Uh, I got on this one, 0.25. If you round it off, I still get QF equal 143 watts. If you're in a, if you're doing a computer code, you can't you can't put the graph in there. So a computer code, you'd use table 35. But for homework or an exam, your choice. Either read this guy or use this guy. It doesn't matter. Take your choice. Okay, doesn't matter then. Three ways to do it. Table 3, 4, 143 watts. Figure 3, 19, 143 watts. Table 3, 5, 143 watts. Doesn't make any difference. Okay. Um, we talked about these other guys on here. We talked about case B, which is a, a adiabatic fin tip. Nobody makes fins where they put insulators on the tip of the fin. The purpose is not to stop heat transfer, it's to take cause heat transfer. So nobody wants to insulate the tip of a fin, that's nonsensical. But we talked about that, about the fin between two walls, 100 degrees C here, 100 degrees C here, and if you want to plot the temperature, let's say the air is blowing over the fin at 25 degrees C, And if you want to plot the temperature from zero out here as a function of x, and this is L, zero, L over two, L, here is the base temperature is 100. The air is at a temperature of 25. Here's the middle. Here's how the fin temperature looks. You say, wow, that's interesting. Look at the middle of that. You know what that middle looks like? It looks like the slope is zero. Well, of course it's zero. dt dx there is zero. And if a slope looks like it's zero, that means it's behaving as if it were adiabatic. And if that's the case, I can use case B. Yep, you got it. So now you solve it, half the fin, case B. Both sides, two times case B. Find Q sub F from here, multiply it by two. A prescribed temperature, okay, prescribed temperature. Maybe, maybe somebody tells you that this side of the fin is at uh, right here, the temperature is 75 degrees C. Okay, the base is 100, the air is 25. That is a case C that you use. All right, so just so you know what that table three, four is gonna give you. Now, I'm gonna take another example, and this one is going to be a triangular fin. All right, let's yeah, put the picture right here. Example, 
change the geometry. It's going to be triangular. Okay. Uh, L, the, the L distance here, six millimeters. The uh, thickness of the fin, two millimeters. Uh, the base temperature of the fin, given 250. The air temperature is 20. Got it. H now is 40. Fine Q sub F. Oh, fine Q sub F prime. Watts per meter. Okay. Uh, start over there. Use table three four. Go to table three four and read the heading. Fins of uniform cross-section area. Oh, no. If I cut the fin here at that X location, I get a big area. Cut the fin in the middle at that X location, a smaller area. Cut the fin near the tip, I get about a zero area. So it's not uniform cross-section area. I can't use table 3-4. Okay, keep going. Let's see, table 3-5. Oh, yeah, on table 3-5. I didn't plot it on there, it gets too crowded, but there's another a line. There's a second line on table, on table uh, 319, or figure 319. That particular one has the picture of a triangular fin. Okay, L sub C, he says, is equal to L. This distance here is T. Profile area, L sub C times T, which is just L times T over two. It's half. One half base times height. What's the base? T. What's the height? L. We can leave L sub C out of there. Okay, so let's go over here and say, um, use figure 319. Let's put some numbers in there. Six, okay. Okay. L, T over two, profile area. Okay. It's small. Everything's in millimeters. Two times uh, 10 to the minus, or six times 10 to the minus six. Okay. Same x same x axis parameter. There it is. Zero seven seven. Okay. We go to the graph. Zero seven seven. We read up vertically to the line for the triangular fin. We go across horizontally, and we read the fin efficiency. Oh, it's somewhere between 9.7 and 9.8. I use 0.98. It definitely is not 0.95, and I'll tell you, it's not 1.0. I can read closer than that. So I know it's between like 9.7, 9.8, around that area. All right, so now I know the fin efficiency. I, again, Put it in the same equation. Okay. A to fin, H, A fin, T, B, minus T infinity. So here we go. Okay. Let me just double check my base temperature. Yeah, 250 and 20. Yeah. Uh, okay. A to fin on uh, 98. I right off of there. Oh, by the way, if you want to do it this way, here, 
you can do it that way too. Um, oh, that, that was our table. Oh, no. Okay, here. Let's put that uh, here. You can do it this way too. So to, to get, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, you can't, excuse me. There is a triangular fin here, okay. This is not the right equation anymore. But if you put the numbers in the equation in table 3.5, you'll get 9.98. Okay, um, and here it's 0.98. Uh, H was 40. Okay, there's AF. That's the top surface of the fin. Hypotenuse one and six. Right triangle. If I want AF, AF is this distance multiplied by that distance. W. <coughs> So the area of the fin, first of all, uh, top and bottom. Uh, now comes the uh, hypotenuse. The square root of the sum of the squares, 0. 0.001 squared. Ah, uh, half. Three zeros and a five. Oh no, it was. I'm sorry. That was two millimeters. Excuse me. Plus uh, this distance is six millimeters. Take the square root. That's hypotenuse. Multiply that by W. I don't know W. Leave it in there. Oh, which one? Uh, oh, thank you. I sure do. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see how we're doing on that. Let's put a big bracket here. Yeah, so there's the area of the fin in the big brackets. Times T base 250 minus 20. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by W because the problem said Q prime watts per meter divide by W, the fin width, the W's cancel out, and I'm left with 110 watts per meter. Your choice is you can use figure 319, triangular fin, or you can use table 35. Looks like that. We don't use the edges of the triangle? Yeah, now let's talk about that real quick, but before I go, I'm going to mention what this thing is here. I'm just going to put it down here. If 
you want to use table 3-5, there it is. Yeah, oh no, right? That's what I'm saying. If you want to use it, that's fine. It'll give you the right answer. But, you know, the oh no part is here they are. Modified Bessel functions of the first and second kind. And the table is even difficult to read. I guarantee you it's not straightforward unless you know the code. So if you want to use table 3.5, you'll have table 3.5 on the midterm. Or you can use the graph. You know, most people like to use a graph. Though. But those are modified Bessel functions in the back of the book and the appendix. Okay. Now, uh, so if I put them in there, I get the same thing. No, really. For practice, go ahead and try it. You better get 0.98. Okay, now, why didn't I include the front and the back area for convection heat transfer? Well, the problem said, I've got a long fin. I want to know how many watts per meter are lost by that long fin. Well, what's a long fin mean? Here's a rectangular fin. It's a, like a pen holder. It goes from over there all the way over to there. If I take out a tape measure and say to you, I want to know how much heat is lost per meter of fin. There's a meter. You tell me, what area touches air? Okay, there's no doubt about it. Top does. The bottom does. Does the left side? Of course not. Does the right side? Of course not. There's aluminum. It keeps going on. So that's why you don't include the front and the back. This is a long, a wide fin. We don't know how wide. We're taking one typical meter out, and the only part of that fin that touches air is the top and the bottom. Okay, now let's take another one. Let's take a circular fin. Okay, for a circular fin, We've done triangular, we've done rectangular, now we'll do circular. <coughs> okay, so there's the circular fin. Try and use three, four. No, you better not, you'd be dead wrong. Because if I make a slice through that fin at different radiuses, starting at R inside and going to R outside, and if I look at a particular radius right there, as the radius gets larger, does the cross-sectional area for conduction get bigger? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It gets bigger. It's not constant. So, no. Conclusion, you can't use table 3-4 for circular fins. Can you use a graph for circular fins? Yes, you can. Go to figure 320. Figure 320. And it has a bunch of different graphs on here. But it is for the picture shows you there. It's for circular fins. Yeah, it's there. If you say, well, okay, but can I just get an equation for it? Yeah, you can get an equation for it. Let's go to table 3-5. There it is, table 3-5. <laughs> table 3-5, okay. Um, again. Circular fin. Okay, here is the uh, fin efficiency.
why nobody uses it, of course. I just, I just did to show you. On exam, not many folks are going to go that way because you think, oh my gosh, this could take me 20 minutes to calculate this guy out of here. No, no, no. It's true and it gives you accurate answers, but when you're under time constraint, I would recommend the graph. It's a lot easier. Quick, quick, quick. But if you want to put on computer code, there's the equation. Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's a bunch of Bessel functions, you know, modified Bessel functions of the first and second kinds. The K's and the I's. Yeah, uh -huh, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. So you got a choice though, it's up to you. Circular fin, you can use figure 320 or you can use table 35. Now, you, maybe you wanna go to um, a, a pin fin. Uh, looks like this. Or maybe a pin fin that looks like this. Okay. Which guy here? You have arm cross section? Oh yeah. You want to? This one? Slice it. Pi r squared, pi r squared, pi r squared. Ah, this one? I can use table three, four. This one I can't. Okay. Uh, the graph in here. Uh, you can't, the pin fin, it, 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 there's no pin fin in here, okay. The table three, five? Yeah, table three, five has both of those guys in there. It has this pin fin and it has this pin fin. So table three five has both these guys in that table. So again, see you've got three possible resources to solve fin problems and you have to pick the one that works for that particular application. Uh, so homework you'll you'll get a good feeling for that now on homework now the last topic in chapter three anything else before i go on with the last one yeah um for circular pins what would be uh lc and ab just it's it's on the it's on the graph here like it says here um r 2 c equals so and so lc equals so and so right. on the graph uh, mm -hmm. uh okay now of course most of the time <laughs> We don't just stick one fin on a wall or one fin on a tube. There's multiple fins attached to a wall or a tube. Or we put, or we put thousands of these guys on on a wall. Let's see if I've got that. Maybe I do. Let's see if I do here. Oh yeah. This is in. Machine Design Magazine. We all Emmys know that. Machine Design Magazine, okay. Cooling the pin fin way. Elect electronic cooling in a small package. It it's an interesting article, but I just want to tell you, uh, they're using um, aluminum, and on this little electronic package, they have the uh, fins. They have 619 fins on it. 619 fins. Two and a half by two and a half inches. That big by that big, there's 600 of those guys to take the heat away from electronics. Oh yeah, they pack them in there. So again, most of the time we don't just put one fin on something. We put multiple fins on a surface. So if we look at that, how we tackle that, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a couple things you should be aware of. <clears throat> we'll show two cases. One is rectangular fins attached to a wall. So here's some rectangular fins attached to a wall. Uh, this is the uh, base area, so T base here. Uh, this is the fin area, and there is some base area exposed to the ambient conditions. Here's the convection from, let's say, a fluid whose temperature is T infinity, and the convection coefficient on the fin and the wall is both H, assumed to be the same. 
So the uh, equation that we want for those fin surfaces, we'll just write down the e equation. Q total equal Q fins plus Q base wall. Uh, Q fins, capital N is the number of fins, times eta fin, H, area of the fin, times theta base, plus the bare wall is the area bare wall times H times theta base. The uh, area of the bare wall is uh, equal to the uh, total area N fins AF. Little squiggly line, that's that's the base area. You know the fin area, it's top, bottom, front, back, and the end for convection heat transfer. So let's put it here. Now you can do the same thing for a uh, circular fin. This is the bare wall exposed to the convection. This is the fin surface, of course, here. The same equation still holds. How many fins are there? Capital N. AF is the fin area of one fin. Now, AF is the fin area of one fin. N takes into account how many fins there are. And the bare wall is the wall between the two adjoining fins. The bare wall is the area between the two adjoining fins. So no matter what the geometry is, you go ahead and use that equation. And then you go to table 3-4, table 3-5, figure 3-19, figure 3-20, and either get the efficiency or the heat loss by one fin. Okay, any question on that then? You've got, I'll give you one prompt for homework. One involves circular fins and one involves rectangular fins for homework. Okay, um, now that pretty much ends up our uh, chapter three. I'm gonna start chapter four right now for about 10 minutes, and, but I'm just telling you that anything I do this week on chapter four is not gonna be on that midterm next Monday. So, you know, what I do now today and the rest of this week in chapter four Keep it in your notes, but nothing on the first midterm from chapter four. All right, so let's go back and look at chapter three, what we assumed. So chapter three, assumptions. Okay, first of all, we had 1D heat transfer. Then we had steady state. Then we had no generation. Then we had constant properties. When we get to chapter four, we start relaxing some of those assumptions. Now we say, you know what? Most things in the real world are two-dimensional, not one-dimensional. So we're going to say in chapter four, now we're gonna study 2D heat transfer. You know, in, in chapter three, we had a fin. 
and we said that I must write up here. We said that the temperature, this is T minus T infinity over T base minus T infinity. We said this gives us a temperature as a function of X. X is in the equations. So we're assuming 1D heat transfer. Well, you know that can't really be true. Uh, sure, there's going to be heat transfer that way. But do you think there's going to be some conduction this way and gets out by convection? Of course there will, there will be. If it goes out that way, there has to be a temperature difference as you go towards the outside edge, top of them. There has to be a temperature difference, or there won't be any heat loss out of that top edge. Conclusion. Oh, okay. T must vary as a function of X and also maybe of Y. Right, exactly. But in chapter 3, we make a good assumption for fins that generally we can assume fins to behave in a one-dimensional conduction. But in reality, it's 2D conduction. As a matter of fact, when you do your first computer problem, I'm going to have you get the temperature as a function of X and Y in a fin. Okay. Which is a chapter 4 type problem. Okay. So here's what we're looking at in chapter 4. Um, we're going to look at, for instance, this is just an example. Here's a, a plate. Oh, it might be copper, it might be aluminum, one-eighth inch thick, quarter inch thick, whatever. It's a plate. Uh, we'll call the coordinate center here X and Y. And this will be uh, H and this will be L, coordinate center here. I'm going to say, let's let the left-hand side be T2, the bottom of the plate T2, the right-hand side T2, the top T1. I don't care which one's hotter or colder. If you want to, say T1's hotter than T2. That's fine. All right, go back to Chapter 2, the uh, heat conduction equation in uh, rectangular coordinates. Get rid of everything. Steady state, no generation, constant properties, but let it be 2D. What you're left with is the classic Laplace equation. There it is, chapter 2. Now we want to solve that, but before we solve that, we need to get two constants, two boundary conditions. 2 in x and 2 in y. Okay. So, b, c, number 1. When x equals 0, the temperature for any y is T2. Okay. Other side, right side, b, c, number 2. When x equal L, T, x equal L for any y, T2. B, C, number 3. When y equals 0, put your finger on it, temperature is T2. B, C, number four. When Y equal H, put your finger on it. T is T1 for any X. There's the four B, C. There's a partial differential equation. It can be solved. For, what's the idea? Get the temperature uh, as a function of x and y. That's what you want to do. Now, to solve that in general, uh, maybe you want to do it analytically. Or maybe you have to do it numerically. And maybe it's possible to get a real rough estimate graphically. So there's different ways to solve that. 
we're not going to do any of the analytical ways. They're, they're restricted to simple geometries, and even for simple geometries, it's not always simple. You do that in, in the graduate course here at Cal Poly in, con, in conduction heat transfer. Numerically, yeah, that's probably a lot of the preferred way nowadays. We're going to do one. I mentioned, I mentioned the, the fin. We're going to do one at the end of chapter four uh, for a fin numerically. Okay. And we're going to look briefly at what the graphical solution can tell us or help us understand the problem. So three possible three possible ways there. Um, if you take the uh, graduate course, you spend a lot of time on numerical methods and you do go through some of the analytical methods and that's four hours a week times 10 weeks roughly, 40 hours. And we spend uh, what two class means, two times 65, you know, an hour, <laughs> two hours and 10 minutes on, on this stuff. So, oh yeah, we're just barely scratching the surface. If, if your area of interest is in thermal sciences as an ME, oh, you, you take a ton of stuff in the graduate courses. You, there's a course in uh, conduction heat transfer, one in convection, one in radiation. Okay, that's 120 hours right there. You take uh, advanced fluids, advanced thermal. You take boundary layer, you take potential flow. Oh, wow, viscous flow. There's another 120 hours, 200, 240 hours now you know, of your life. Yeah, so, and how long are we spending? Well, we're spending here 10 weeks, you know, three hours a week. So, no, we're not uh, almost four hours a week. Uh, we're just scratching. Take off two holidays, take off two, uh, take off two exam days. What are you left with? My gosh, you're done about eight weeks now, and the first day isn't that much. So, you know, we're barely scratching that. So, that's, we can't get into depth there. Okay, um, now that's uh, probably a good stopping point for right now. We started chapter four.